So uh, let's start now. The first thing that I would do when I create a physical model, meaning that when I create the tables themselves in a database, the first thing is to look at the, if I am a, a builder or you know, working on the hospital building or the school building, as a project manager, the first thing that I would look, la look at before I start building is the blueprint, right? I need to look at the architecture, the drawing, how the design. And then from there, I will build the actual building. The same thing for databases. We have a blueprint, which we call the logical model. And we will follow exactly what we have in the logical model. So I will show you what I had as a logical model. So I had this is a logical model that I had, for example, for one of my databases. So I would put it somewhere. I would save it. And then I will be using it as a guide for me when I start working on my design. So this is the first step that I would do. So I'll be looking at the tables that I have. And then I will start building a database based on what I have here. So the tables, I have to create the tables and I need to have follow naming conventions and I have to follow the standards that we talked about. And I have to follow as well the naming of the attributes or the fields. So let's start by creating an access from scratch. So in this demo, what I'm going to do, I will create the resident demographics table as a demo. Okay. So we will start. Uh, I will create the resident demogra demographics first, and then I will create a simple portion of the Moore's Fall Risk Evaluation, just a couple of components here. And then I will add maybe gender, or I will just add maybe reason for evaluation. So let's create those three as a demo for you, and then you will be able to follow along and do the rest. But this is just kind of a demo. So the first thing that we do when we create a table, we have learned this from going through a lot of tutorials so far. So I always like to use design view. So when I create a table, I like to use design view. So I will call this table, like what we say, the naming convention, which should be EBL, and then whatever it is, which is resident demographics. Why do you think we, should, we didn't call it patient demographics? Because I think you talked about how we wanted to make them feel more like they're in a resort type setting. Perfect. Just, yes, you're right. We need to show them respect, that we are respecting them as human beings, not just patients. You know, we are giving them that luxury, we are treating them really less, not just because they are patients. Perfect, thank you. So we call that TBL Resident Demographics. Created this table. Now, I will need to name, create the fields that I already have here. I have MRN, first name, middle name, last name, date of birth, age, and gender. So I have to, I'll just put those guys. I will select the data type, and then the size, and so on. So you have to decide on the size of each field by yourself. So I just want to let you know, there is no right or wrong answer for this. It is use your own judgment when you are creating, deciding what is the data type or the uh, size of the field. As long as you are consistent and it doesn't cause you problems later on. So the first uh, key or the first field is 
MRN, right? What do we want to put it as data type? What do you guys suggest? What should we put it as a data type? Numeric. You think numeric? Who thinks numeric? Who thinks otherwise? So, numeric is another one option. We can do that. But uh, yes. What about integer? Would that not be? Well, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, yeah. You're right. That's, so you're that's, not using a calculation, right? When the numeric. That's the good point that I wanted to reach. So, what I want to say is, I would not use numeric unless I want to have calculations. So I would reserve numeric or integer just for when I am using something to calculate. So MRN, I can use short text. It is still, I, I will still be using numbers, but they are not used for calculations. Because I don't need to calculate, uh, you know, 100001 zero, 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 one plus, you know, whatever other uh, numeric or MRN. So, uh, you have a question? Can you make that an automatic number? For MRN, since we... We already went to Second Life and we looked at the demographics of the patient or the residents, okay, the residents that we have in Second Life, and they have already been assigned MRNs. And how many, how many uh, characters? Six. 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 So that's why we need to stick to it and put it as six. So that's, I hope that answers your question. So we don't want to put it auto. If we put it auto number, that's why we call it a surrogate key. So we would put surrogate key when it is necessary. There are some tables that will definitely need surrogate keys. And we will look at it. So MRN, I will put it as short, short text. And then the size, everyone agrees? Should we give it six? Then we will move on to the, and then, you know, the assignment asks you also to put some description, what is MRA, fill it out, and explain what it is, All right? So that's for the purpose of documentation that we talked about, the repository, that's very important. So now, going to the next step, or the next field, what is it? First name, and we are using the camel case. So capitalize the first letter of each word. First name, what do you guys think the data type should be? Short text. Sure. And then you decide what you want to put as the size. For me, I'll just put the default for now because I'm just the new one, right? Uh, let's say then the second, uh, the third would be? Middle <coughs> Short, I will use it. And last name. Sure. Then what is next? What do you guys think I should put? Date. Put date. I'll look for date here. <coughs> do you suggest that we put a mask? Yeah. Mask, input mask would be nice. So the input mask will be somewhere here. Does one of you see it? Oh, yeah, it's the second option. So now, I'll say yes, yeah, save the table first, and then I will go to page short. Yeah. I just want to use this guy. What is next? Page, I would not put age. You remember we talked about it? Maybe this is, I got it from one of the, the students who have done it. But age, I would not put it. Because the reason for it, this year you are 20, 21. So we say the average of you is 21, right? 20, 21, right? Or 20? Maybe 20? Ah, you are older than 21? Okay, so let's say that, assume, assume that you are 21, your average age, excluding my age, because it's going to skew the whole um, average, but, so 21, this year, what if next year came and the age is still 21, but you are 22? then that's a problem. Because if we put the age in a table, it is static. It's not going to change. But if we put it as a date, then we can calculate the exact age using a query, like what we did. So that's why I would not put age. Now, I'll put gender. 
<laughs> and what do you guys think the gender should be? Short tight. Short. Yeah. I'll just leave it as for you, you decide what is the size you want and so on. So now I am done with this first guy. I'll save him. Close this guy and create that because those are the two main tables that we deal. And the rest they are all kind of related to those two main. So the demographics has a lot of related tables. And I have also provided you with a with a video that you can watch. It has kind of more uh, tips and advice that you can benefit from. So now let's create the other table, which we call it TBL Morse Full Risk Evaluation. Uh, but the first field is Evaluation ID. So Evaluation ID, what do you guys suggest here? What data type should I use for this guy? Order number. Order number, yes. Because it is a very nice circuit key. Auto number. Because as soon as I start an assessment or an evaluation as a nurse, automatically it is populated the number for me. I don't need to go and key in the, you know, the evaluation number. Because so I will have so many. So order number automatically pop up by itself and do it for me. So that's the first guy. The second one is MRN. And I need to be careful here. MRN is a foreign key, right? It came from a different table. So I need to be matching exactly what criteria that I have put. That is that. So what are we going to do now? Are you working on this or something else? Something else? So let's uh, we agree that we are going to pay attention. So please, if we are in a class, let's respect the class and the instructor and the, the, the classmates. When we are covering something, let's pay attention to that, not something else. So. MRN, we say one thing that we need to be careful with is we have to match the exact criteria we have used for it when it was a primary key. So in this case, what was different than what we have here? What did we put criteria for MRN? The field size. The field size. So it was six, so I need to be matching it exactly. Otherwise, it will cause me some errors. And you, it will not be fixed easily if you didn't pay attention to this little detail. So that was MRN. So let me add evaluation date and evaluation reason, and then I will stop there, and then I will let you continue. But this is kind of a demo. So then evaluation date. So this, the evaluation date, what data time should I put? Date, and I will put mask also if necessary. Just outplay for now that way. And then the next one is evaluation reason. So for evaluation reason, what do you think you should put as a data type? Long text. <coughs> so should put two five because two fifty five characters. Because the reason how what what are the I it can be the most is two words. So one word might be, you, you already know from the exact uh, reasons from the documentation. But for me, I would just put something. But don't, don't follow what I would put, because you would put what the user requested. No. For me now, I'm just uh, trying to put a demo. So I will put it as it is for now, right? I will save it. And then I will come back later to do the lookup. I need to do a lookup later on after I create the table for reasons. So now, TBL, Morse for risk evaluation. <coughs> so now it is telling me that there is no primary key. 
right? So by default, it put the circuit key as the primary key. That's good for me. How close this guy? Yes. Get the mark the phone key. Yes. Sometimes just kind of tip because they might not cover it here. Let's say that we have two keys here, right? And we have done this in one of the tutorials. If you <coughs> have to have two uh, fields as a primary key, then you will have to highlight both. <coughs> we learn. So to do that, I will have to to hide or to highlight. Well, this is a demo, this is not how it is, but I will just show you how if I decided to have evaluation ID and MRN as uh, primary key, as composite primary key. I will highlight both of them, and then also like go to design. Now I have two primary keys, right? So this is something that I wanted to cover, and that's what you asked. So is that what you asked? If, for example, you didn't have, for some reason, you can just select the exact key you want and put it at the time right here. So you don't have to denote a foreign key, right? The foreign key, there is no option here okay. to denote it. So uh, that's for this table. Now let's create that table. We call it reasons. So evaluation reasons. So if you see here the evaluation reason, we have two types or we have two uh, fields, right? So one field is called evaluation reason ID. What did I call okay. this one? I might have to change it. Evaluation ID. I called it uh, for the reason. What did I call it? Evaluation reason. Did I call it I evaluation, evaluation reason ID? ID. It has to be ID. So I need to be matching exactly what it is. So let me go back to this guy. And I will call it here evaluation reason evaluation reason. So this guy close, and then uh, we will create this guy for table evaluation reason. So evaluation reason ID. <coughs> what they will put it short would be good. Right? Or, or what do you think? Sure, it would be fine. That way we can assign it because we have only three. We don't have to add new every time. We have only fixed number of reasons. And then the second uh, field is evaluation is the text. Short or long? Short. Let's keep it short for now. And then all the same, this guy. And then before I save this, it might ask me to put a uh, primary key. So I'll put the ID as the primary key. Save this guy. I'll call him TBL. Evaluation reason. <coughs> so now I have all my tables that I need. Now I need to look at the relationships. After I create my tables, I will need to create the relationships. I'll just kind of match what I have is a logical model. Just put, put them kind of somewhere there. Now, one thing that we need to always use to make it easier for us, any foreign key needs to be formatted as a lookup from its original table. Like MRN here needs to be looked up from the resident demographic state. So to do that, everyone should know by now, but let's do this guy, MRN, and also we have evaluation of reason ID is a foreign key for this table, right? So it has to be looked up from this table, right? So let's do this guy, uh, I'll save here, and then I will go to each table. So I will start with the more for evaluation go to design, and I will make sure that the MRN, MRN is looked up from the demographic state. So I need also, when I, I have a drop down, I need to see the first name and last name, just in case, because it helps, instead of remembering names. Because one of essential point in design is that we don't have 
to remember any numbers. We don't have to remember any numbers. Don't let the end user remember any numbers because that's a very bad design. So we will try to avoid that. So that's why we have to put also the first name and the last name here. Then we can order them by MRN and so on. Now first name, last name. What do I want to uh, save or store in the evaluation table? I will just keep the MRN for now. I don't call it MRN, so yes. So now I save this guy. We're going to want to do this with pretty much every foreign key. Is that right? Yeah. It makes, it will make it much easier when we create the forms. That's the purpose of it. So now let's do uh, a lookup for evaluation reason ID. Let's go back to design view, and then evaluation reason ID. I need to look, do the same lookup process. So I need to look it up from evaluation reason table. And I need to see both. The ID, which can be number, and I want also to see the exact text, the wording. And then what I want to order it by, what I, I really want to save here is the wording. So that's why I will not hide key column. I will just put evaluation reason here. I want to see the exact reason instead of the number. Because the number might not tell me much. I need to see the exact reason. So then I will go next, finish. Yes, save. Now I can start kind of building or uh, filling up or changing. Let's change those guys. Here they are. We don't have the cardinalities showing, right? So to do that, I will just edit and enforce. Right. So now I have one to many, one to many. That's exactly what we have planned here, right? And also your ERD logical model uh, assignment. Now, let's kind of fill out. It will make much e life easier if you fill out some of those tables. For example, the reasons. We already know that there are three or four reasons. Let's fill them up ahead of time while we are building the tables. And also, let's say for phone types, we can fill, populate those tables from now. We don't have to wait until we create the forms. So now, let me populate the evaluation reason. So I'll put one here as the ID. And then the second, I would assume the first one is reason is admission. But I, as I, I mentioned, I will let you look at what the user requirement are, what the user told you in the documentation. So the second one is maybe every two weeks or every other week. And then the third one is transfer or discharge. So those are just kind of examples that I created in my site. So I will just save this guy, close it. So this is what I have. I remember some of you wanted to put admission, for example, in one field. Every other week in one field, discharge in one field. So now we understand why we didn't Let's choose to do that, because this is what we would need to do. Close this guide. Now, when I am populating this forceful evaluation, I can look up. Let me just also populate just one, one demo for resident. Let's say that resident is me. And then the first name is M. And it'll initial M, M, date of birth. Uh, let's say 11, 11, 11, 11, 1999. And then gender, this would be also looked up from the gender table. Then I would be able to select only one thing. So I'll just put it here and for now, say I haven't programmed here. Close this guy. So then when I go and create an evaluation as a nurse, as you can see here, I have it auto, that means Definitely, definitely, as soon as they start a new assessment, it will uh, be populated with a primary key by itself. So MRN, I'll be looking it up from here. I have only one so far. Yeah, select them. 
evaluation ID or uh, evaluation date. Now we can see them exactly. Evaluation date, you can just select the date from here. Simple. Next, <coughs> what is the reason? Let's say admission, I just came, just fall, just fell, and now they took me to the center. So that's one. Now if I, I want to add another one, <laughs> I can either go from here, navigation, you know, now we are just dealing with the tables, but when we have forms, we will have better navigation buttons and so on. That would be fancier. So now let's say that I want to add another uh, record. <coughs> so let's say after two weeks, I came, or after one week, I came, and then I was discharged, right? I was just look at that one. So now do you see how easy it is? When I create a form, it is already built for me. Simple. I don't have any uh, issues with it. So this is a demo, and I hope that this gives you kind of a good jump start and understanding how to start building the tables. Because this is the most essential point now where we start implementation. Uh,